Hi, my name is Marwan Abudib, and I'm the founder of Tikuma and a partner of Tikuma Frenchman Urban Design, which I started together with MIT professor Dennis Frenchman. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm very thankful, especially that I was born and raised in Dubai, the city that gave birth to my passion, which is the art of city making. So together with my team, I design future cities, cities that are growing at the intersection of technology, culture, and economics. But I would like to step back 11 years ago. At the age of 16, I drew the sketch of the city of Dubai, imagining what it would be like in the year 2020. It was a coincidence. The expo wasn't even going to be hosted in 2020. Today, the city looks like this. So I have to say, there's some accuracy, although I do think my buildings are a bit more funky. But I also missed the time frame. I said 2020. That was 13 years from 2007. The city of Dubai is growing at such a fast rate that we need to keep up with that speed. So when I went to MIT to study architecture and real estate development, my vision for future cities became more embedded in sci-fi, science fiction. I started to imagine in this project, which was um, looking at New York City, like what happens when cities run out of real estate? How do we build a new kind of public infrastructure, a new way for people to socialize and interact with one another? And then my thesis started to look at cities like machines, engines that can provide economic development. So how do we do that? But really, what was the problem that I was trying to solve? 300,000 people move to cities every day. That's 2 million people per week. So imagine the challenge of having to design a city per week to fit 2 million people around the world. And just as Daria said, 70% of the world's population will be urbanized by 2050. So 90% of that movement of urbanization is happening in the developing world. New global trade routes that go from China into Africa and China into Europe. And Dubai is at the heart of it all, the pulsating beat. So it's only, it only makes sense that the city that I was born in is inspiring me to follow this passion. So this is a global challenge, though. How do we house millions of people when, the, at the end of the day, the city is what will allow us to perform? Unfortunately, we ended up mass-producing cities like this, manufactured, thinking that we can take people from the farms and put them in cities. This is a ghost city in China. But what happened? We were designing cities like this, like Rome. This was an art piece. It all worked together. It functioned as one. Or cities like Paris. Or even 21st century cities like Dubai. I see these as products. Some people see them as cities, but these are products. <laughs> or Shanghai. So I want to tell you why people are moving to cities, or what is the main reason that really pushes me. Innovation happens in a place. And it's in our human DNA that we want to compete with one, another, with one another. Just like how we're all here in this room, dialogues will happen, conversations will take place, we have different backgrounds, and who knows, we might come up with the next big idea. So I see cities as a platform, and the city needs to perform well so that we as people can excel within them. And I like to use this analogy of a phone. Back in the day, the 3310, the most indestructible phone in the world, <laughs> was um, just, you could just call people, or you could play the game of Snake. Today, the iPhone X allows you to summon a driver, book a flight, directions, GPS. We've become superhumans. So how do these devices also make our cities super cities? So today, a new kind of layer blankets our cities, and that's a digital layer, where with these devices, we know how people interact, how people move, what people need and want for their cities, hence informing us of how to design them. But that is also being driven by digital natives. A digital native is a millennial, someone who's born in the digital era. They cannot survive without their phone. But at the same time, these people want to live, work, play, and even learn in the same place. They do not want to be stuck in traffic commuting. They do not want to spend time that is wasted. So how do you design for them? When everyone wants to live in downtowns and the real estate prices are going up, it's intense. Today, I've designed 12 cities in the past year and a half alone, four in China and seven now in the Middle East. 
A month ago, on my birthday, we ended up winning this competition to design a future neighborhood of Shenzhen, China. What we did in the public realm is to, create, to bring research into the urban fabric of the city. In the past, research used to take place outside the city. The heavy industry, the heavy tech, we don't want, you know, it's the dirty stuff, let's keep it outside. But today, the public wants to learn. Just like how we are here in the Emirates Towers Boulevard, turning a retail space into an accelerator space or, or startups to, that could be hosted, this is what future cities need. Another project we're working on is how to activate the city with color. Dubai plants so many flowers just to make the city look beautiful. They're actually doing it right now since summer is over. But water is becoming an issue. It's not sustainable. So we're working with a lab at MIT to look at new kinds of materials that can react to different temperature and uh, light. And another project is looking at vertical farming and how can we create a digital botanical garden. At the end of the day, I have to say, I've lived, I left Dubai 10 years ago, and now I'm back. Uh, we're launching an office here in the city, and the reason I want to be back is that deployment of innovation is actually happening in the emerging world. I cannot think of a not better place than Dubai. And also, my mission is to impact the millions of lives of people that will live in the cities that I hope to design. Thank you very much.